Want to know what's better than learning a better way to create one of these node animations that with interconnected lines? Learning how to control it using controllers. That's what we're going to do next. The goal is to create a line that is controlled by null objects, and those null objects will move around the points of those lines that can be then attached, parented, pick whipped to objects out on screen. Then we want to be able to control the line animation, such as the movement of the line, if it had dashes or the line growing in between objects, and that's going to be done using a slider. To start, go into Window, Create Nulls from Paths. This pops open a new window that you can then drag and dock off on the right side. Draw a line. Go to Shape Layer 1, which is this line. Rename this line to line. Makes it a little simpler. Open up contents for that line. Go to shape one, go to path one, and select the path. Click on points, follow nulls, pick up the move tool. You have these null objects, one on each end of the line, or as many points that there are in line will be a null object. Some of the properties that will be fun to control with this line is the growth of the line, and also the moving of dashes. To add some dashes to this line, open up stroke one, and where it says dashes, press the plus sign. Those dashes can be animated using offset, and that's one of the things I'm going to wire into a slider. If I could do it for one line, I could do it for many lines. The idea is to have a slider control all the lines in your animation. Another property that I'm interested in, I'm clicking on shape one, is a trim path. And that trim path will let you grow that line. So those are two valuable things, moving of the line and the growth of the line. With the line all set up, the next part is to create some placeholder objects, such as a word. And that placeholder object will contain the controllers that will control this line or any objects out here. You need to convert this to a guide layer by right clicking and select guide layer. Guide layers don't render. For the render, it'll look like this, invisible. To us, out here, it's something that we could click on easily to get to our controllers. You want to add a slider to this. Going under effects, type in control, type in control, Select the slider control and drag it to here or off into the effects. It adds a slider to this. Let's take a look at the slider real quickly. To edit the slider's name, right click on it and you can rename it. And I'm gonna call it slider line. To edit the range of the slider, going from zero to 100, maybe this is about scaling to the negative direction or maybe you want to use this for positioning. If you right click on the word slider, you can edit the values, the range going from zero to 100 is the default. You can change this as you need. To wire this line to be controlled by the slider, open up the line again. The properties that I'm interested in wiring to this slider is the end of the trim path to make the line grow and also the offset of the dash lines. By wiring that to a slider, you'll be able to animate the line moving. With this exposed right here, click on your control lines and then using the pick whip, drag that right to the slider. This is selected to make this control lines in focus. And now I can see the slider, and I'll just drag and drop the pick whip on there. Clicking back on my guide layer to then have access to my slider. You can now animate those lines like this. I'm gonna make another slider control to control the growth of this line, and then I'll apply it to more than one line. Dragging and dropping onto here. That's this control lines layer. Rename this one, slider grow. Makes the line grow. Find the trim path of this line by going under shapes, trim path one, the end trim path, and go all the way across to its pick whip and drag and drop that onto that slider. Bring your controls back into focus by clicking here. 
open up the slider, and now you can see this line grow between those two points. Remember, our goal is to animate these boxes following around other objects. I'll just animate this null object right now. Position key and moving here. The null moves this way. You'll go to the control lines and go to grow at frame zero. It's at 0%. And a little further on, we'll just make that line grow. Now it's growing towards the other null object. If you want your line to go in a different direction, just open up your line. I'm pressing UU twice to see the line quickly. Under path one, just click this icon to reverse the direction. The next part of the concept is to get objects for this line to grow in between and also to wire in a few more of these sliders to have a global control over many nodes and many lines. Let's take a look at the next part. Making a new composition, all this nodes. Within here will be various nodes. First, you want to create one, and then we could propagate it. I'm going to create a new composition, and this will be my actual node itself. This is the whole node composition, but I want one node. You could call this one node object. It's going to be smaller. Each node is smaller, making this 400 by 400. Clicking OK. This will be the template for all the nodes. In the background will be some shape. That color will be changed. I'll fill in this shape. No stroke for it. Going back to the main composition. Going to projects. Then you would drag out this node here. I don't want this node to be shaped just as a square, I want a network of interconnected thought bubbles. To do that, I'll use a shape mask. This will be a temporary mask. I'm going to replace this mask with this piece of art. This is an illustrator line. So you could draw out whatever shape you want. As long as it's a closed line, copy it. I'm going to here, open up mask one. For mask path, click on it and press paste. Command V or Control V to paste. If your object was too small, your shape was too small to be a mask, you can resize it in Illustrator, copy it again, click on Mask Path and paste. That's how you can control the size. And it's bi directional too. If you draw out a mask here and you copy it, you go to Illustrator and Command, command V to paste it and rescale it here and then bring it back to After Effects. I want this node to look like it's breathing as it moves. Let me add one more visualization to this that you'll change up, and I'll add a word to it. Things that might be on someone's mind. Happy. I'll place it in the center, going back to my node. Eventually, we'll have several of these thought bubbles propagated. Create a guide layer, and that guide layer will be scale. That's all that's going to happen with this node. The scale will make this grow and shrink and also control the speed of growing and shrinking for all the thought bubbles in your network. Click on this word, make it a guide layer, right click guide layer. That way this layer won't render. Add to this two sliders. One will be scale and the other one will be scale speed. Rename Rename the slider, scale amount, and the second slider, right click, rename, scale speed. Go to this layer and press the S key to expose scale. And there's the pick width for scale that we'll be using in a moment. Clicking on the control layer, use the pick width just to wire in the scale amount. We'll add the scale speed in a moment. Scale amount. Clicking here. Currently, the scale amount can be controlled like this. We're going to control it a better way using a script. And that script is included in the description. One part of the script will be the amount of scaling, and the second part will deal with how fast the scaling happens. 
This is the script that's going to be used. The scale speed says go find the slider underneath scale. Scale's here and it's called scale as a layer. Find the slider that's called scale speed. Here's scale speed and here's scale amount. Get the slider value. We're going to use the wiggle that adds random movement, random scale, randomness to your After Effects animation. It takes in two values. How often to do something, which will be the scale speed, and how much to do something, the scale amount. To assign the wiggle to a scale, this is the piece of code you need to use, x value and y value. Luckily, all you have to do is copy and paste this from the description in the right place. Opening up the scale that was wired with the pick whip. When you pick whip two properties, you're actually creating connections via scripting. I'm going to replace this script with the one I just copied and pasted. Well, why isn't it moving? I have no wiggle speed. Let me increase my wiggle amount. Look at that. Throbbing thoughts. I can make the speed less. How many times to do it per? At 19, that's going to be a lot more, not less. I'm going to set it down to, I'll click here, I'll set it down to 0.1. There's a nice slow breathing. The amount of scale is controlled by this other slider, going from 100%, 94, and 100. At 50, the object will scale anywhere from 50% to 100%. At 100, this will go anywhere from 0 to 1, 100%. I'm going to decrease the amount of scaling by just typing in 40. This will scale the original object from 60% up to 100%. Now, the fun of this isn't, of course, the wiring over and over again. No, we want this to be more automated. And that's the part I'm going to show you right now. How to make the propagation of this throughout a whole node network very easy. We have this composition. We're done with our wiring. Don't, you don't want to touch the wiring again. We're interested in now creating art. This node object is the composition that controls this layer. I'm going to duplicate this node object in the project area. Command D or Control D. I'm going to double click this and choose a different background. And a different word for, for the word. Pick whatever you want. Then go back to your node composition. Duplicate this one. This one has all the wiring needed. This layer has everything we need to connect into the, the scale slider controls. By duplicating it, sure, we just create another one of it. That doesn't help us a lot. This is the part that will make this very productive. Going back to your project, selecting the second layer, which is now this one. Let me just flip around the order. Selecting this layer, clicking on this composition in your project area and option dragging or alt dragging and replacing this object. Now it's a whole unique object, but not only is it a whole unique object, you press the UU key. You can see it's already wired into this. Now, to make it work, you have to do nothing. You could continue creating your dynamic interconnected network cloud this way. I'm going to create another object. Now, the fun part is to interconnect all this using lines. Draw a line. This line will be my placeholder line that I'll duplicate. When you're done drawing the line, make sure to pick fill pattern for the stroke and turn off fill. And for the stroke, pick a color. Go rename this line. Expand this line under its content. Go to adjust the stroke width. Maybe this is a thin line. Adding dashes. And you can follow the earlier part of this video to see how to wire up this line so you can animate the dashes and the growth of the line. And this will be the line that gets repeated over and over again. I'm going to press Control D. We need this three times, one, two, and three. Selecting this line, expanding its content to expose the path. 
the quick way to do that is the UU key. There's the path. If you don't see your create nulls from paths, that was under Windows, create nulls from paths. Under path one with the path property selected, click on points follow nulls. Move this null object to the center of this first thought bubble. Select this null object and move it to the center of the second thought bubble. You can use the cursor keys to jog around pixel by pixel till you're happy with the centering. This is node object layer number six, and this is layer number eight. This null object will be parented, click parent and links. This one gets connected to layer number eight. Wherever this thought bubble travels, so will this line. This one, this null object gets parented to number six. And now make sure your node objects are above the line. Just like that. You want to reposition or animate this moving. You can do that and the line will stay attached. Let me connect this one to here. Besides just being scale, this now could be scale and position. I'm going to label it scale and position. This way, anyone else using your files will know why this is here. I'm going to rename this layer, make sure that our scripts don't break, to just scale. Because currently, our script is using scale for the name of the layer. We we'll always want to make sure this layer name doesn't change after you already have some scripts going. Clicking on here, going to Effect Controls, you want to add in two more sliders. And these will be used to control how quickly you move the object and how far. To rename this, rename Position Speed and Position Amount. This is a script that you could copy and paste from the description. The speed, how quickly to move, will be from the scale layer. Find the position speed right here and get the value from this slider. Right now it's zero. Then how far to move from the same scale layer, find the position amount slider and get its value and then use wiggle to make some random movement, how many times per second to move this mount. I'm going to copy that and I'll paste it in a moment. Since this wasn't done to start with, you're going to have to repeat this three times. No big deal. Press the P for position key on any of the nodes, any of these objects out here. Click on this word to expose this layer and use the pick whip to just drag to this layer. Open up the position to show the expression. Paste the expression into the window. Paste this expression into the scripting area. And there's no movement yet. Before I propagate it, I want to make sure it moves this one. Let's add some value to the speed and the amount. Move a lot, and you can see it's already moving, and often. And now we have a very nervous thought bubble that hasn't slept in a very, very long while. To wire in the rest, here's a shortcut. Just click on this pick whip and just drag it somewhere. That automatically adds a script. There's nothing useful in that script. That's okay, because you want to replace this script by double clicking on it and selecting everything. You don't want to leave any of this previous stuff and just paste our new script in there. I'll do it for the next one as well. Jittering away out there. Let's slow it down a little bit. Decreasing the speed. And that has a totally different feel to it. 